Hello folks, Kevin Polk here to tell you a little history of me uh, and the matrix diagram back there. Um, I was born in Texas and then raised in Oklahoma for the most part. That's where my accent comes from. And I've always wanted to help the world. Even when I was a teenager, I would think about helping the world somehow. Of course, back then I had no idea how. And um, though those thoughts would come and go here and there, I really didn't do anything with them, but I went ahead and went to college. Ended up getting a degree, a degree in psychology. Wrote a dissertation in experimental psychology. Um, got a clinical psychology degree and even before I wrote the dissertation my master's was studying more social psychology and industrial organizational psychology so I've always had a really broad interest across psychology and uh, but nevertheless got the degree in clinical psychology and went to work ended up going to work helping people with trauma memories of what you would know as PTSD but Believe me, most people with trauma memories don't develop PTSD, so I, I work with people with trauma memories, uh, even if they might be labeled as PTSD. That's another story. So anyways, uh, for many years, almost 30 years now, I've worked with uh, those folks, trauma memory folks, and uh, for the first 15 or so, I use something called, well, first I use stress inoculation training. Da, 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 Donald Michael Baum, if anybody knows that. Then uh, cognitive behavioral therapy, um, coping skills, training kind of stuff, uh, all kinds of things for for trauma memories. Uh, that wasn't working as well as I and a colleague I work with named Gerald, uh, we had hoped for. So we uh, were searching around, looking for better and better stuff. Came across prolonged exposure by Edna Foa, we were taught it by Edna Foa, and uh, um, that was okay, but a lot of people won't do it because it's really the way it's done there with PE, prolonged exposure. A lot of people don't like recalling the trauma memories as much as that requires. Uh, Learn CPT, Cognitive Processing Therapy. Uh, that had a whole lot of homework, and people didn't like that either. Um, and so, I mean, there's always leaving people behind, you know, trying to get people engaged in this work and uh, leaving them behind. So then we, I and he, discovered this thing called acceptance and, commit and commitment training and therapy. I actually found the training first. That's where you uh, do acceptance and commitment training in businesses and stuff and improve, or it can improve, people's workplace performance and their happiness at work and stuff. But it also has this acceptance acceptance and commitment therapy arm, and that's the part you could use with trauma memories. And we saw it as a really cool way to do that. Uh, and I and he really immersed ourselves into the study of that. I mean, literally, I was obsessed, come on. Uh, I read every book there was on it, literally, every book there was. Uh, and then there wasn't so many back then. That would be a lot harder to do now. Uh, but between 2004 and 2009, that was possible. I read, as far as I know, every article uh, about the philosophy behind it called functional contextualism and the theory of language and cognition behind that, uh, known as relational frame theory. Uh, and uh, well, read all of that, too, and became really good at that. Uh, practiced in workplaces, in classrooms, community organizations, stress management presentations, all kinds of stuff like that, doing acceptance and commitment training, uh, doing thousands of hours of acceptance and commitment therapy with the people with the trauma memories, uh, all the while reading, all the while discussing with Gerald, all the while discussing with uh, a guy named Mark over in the United Kingdom, and literally hundreds of others of clinical visitors who came to visit because they heard about the excitement of what... Uh, I was doing and other and, and Gerald was doing and um, uh, and so uh, well in 2009 this book came out called Drive Relational Responding it's sort of tough it's not a very exciting book I have it here somewhere uh, but anyway I was reading along on that very fast if I tried to read it today it would take me weeks to read it back then I could read it in a week uh, and while I was reading it I uh, uh, 
said, oh my, you could do a trauma memory sorting game. This book, this derived relational responding book, has developmentally challenged kids doing lots of sorting tasks uh, to help them derive up stuff like this. A equals B, so now you know that. B equals C, so now you know that. You also know that A equals C. That's a derivation, because I didn't tell you that. I didn't show you that explicitly. And there's all other kinds of derivations that people do, derived relational responding that people do. And uh, so while I was doing that, and I had all the sorting, so I thought, well, I could sort these trauma memories. I started to develop a trauma memory sorting game, and this showed up. Uh, I was going to have them sort the stuff into their uh, sensory experiences, sort stuff into their mental experiencing, um, sort stuff toward how it felt to move toward, and sort stuff how it felt to move away, and noticing the difference all along. And when I stood up and drew that, I knew it was something important and big and that it would probably have legs and sort of in a small way go viral and so and remember i think i mentioned uh, back when i was a kid i always thought about helping the world and so i thought well that's a cool way of doing it maybe that'll help out the world so i released it to the world did a youtube video and did blog posts and phew, gave it away to the world and um and because of that it's gone around the world uh, really neat, but we did get to do a book on it. Here's, let's see if I can show, uh, there, there's the uh, thing of the book uh, that's out it's called The Act Matrix um, that I, uh, that book I uh, co-edited with Benji Schoendorf. And, um, but almost every country in the world, there's one or a dozen people using that diagram in classrooms and community organizations and therapy rooms and businesses, uh, just in all kinds of different places, uh, that that thing has gotten to. And so that's what this YouTube channel is about that I do. It's about showing people with lots of videos, and you can see how they've evolved over the years, um, how to use this diagram. And also about the philosophy behind it and the relational frame theory stuff behind it. There's technical stuff, but a lot of the videos I keep very simple. You know, and, I'm, and I'm just trying to get this out to the world. And so to do that uh, requires time and money. And uh, my day job, of course, I don't get I can do this with individuals and stuff, but I, it's hard to spread it to the world. And so I'm working on replacing my day job income with this income. And the way I'm doing that is with the Patreon site. And it's on the front of this, and it's next to this video. Uh, and if you'll go to it, and if you could support me, even for a dollar or five dollars or ten dollars, whatever, three dollars, two dollars. <laughs> Anything will do, uh, because if lots and lots of people do that, then I can um, do less of my day job, so to speak, and more of this and make this into my day job, because this is where I really get rewarded, getting this, this diagram into every nook and cranny. Remember, it helps people drive up new stuff, uh, and it works really well for that. They can look at it, and they're sort of bogged down. Um, even if you're in a meeting or something and you feel sort of bogged down, you can haul out this diagram and I can show you how to use it uh, in a meeting and things perk up and people start thinking of new stuff to do, new stuff to try out and see if it works. And then you use the noticing in the middle to see if it works. Um, and people with trauma memories and anxiety and uh, you know, troubles with procrastination or uh, just all kinds of stuff, uh, can get it, they get sort of bogged down, sort of a little feel a little bit stuck in life, and uh, can whip around and play around with this diagram, do this noticing business, feel more freed up, and think, start thinking, gee, I could try this, gee, I can try that. They indeed do try new things, uh, and uh, and see if they work. You do the noticing the middle. Not everything you try works, you know, uh, but now you can notice the consequences 
uh, and see if it works. And gradually you really get up to a life that you want to be uh, leading. I, I put on one of the things I say is uh, help people soar or soaring. My One of my sites is called Soaring with the Act Matrix. And I like to set things up so people can soar and feel really good about what they're doing uh, in workplaces and stuff. And I, I find people to be extraordinarily creative and cool to work with. Um, and, and I hope you come and patronize me and work with me and we figure out really cool and fascinating ways to use this diagram to help people soar. Uh, so I'll sign off now and that's just a little bit about a little bit about my history and the history of how that thing came to be. Uh, by the way, it's called the Matrix because that's got Keanu Reeves sexy attached to it. A friend of mine had me do that. Uh, obviously the name stuck. You have a great day and I hope you get to soar really soon. Bye bye now.